Hello everybody, welcome back to another Logic Forex tutorial. I am Clormo and today I'm going to be talking about one of the newest features that Logic Forex update 10.4 brings, which is Smart Tempo. So after a few videos uh, showing you how to go about detecting tempo on a file and adjusting your uh, beats accordingly or audio source material accordingly, Logic Forex actually now lets you detect the tempo automatically in the program we are having to do much else so this is going to help you to bring files that are not apple loops or that haven't been added to the apple loops library and set the tempo for one audio region and then bring additional audio files and have them also conform to the new tempo that you have found from that reference file so without further ado let's just start here in Logic pro x i'm just gonna create an empty file the I won't even pay attention to the settings because it won't matter. I'm going to say software instrument only because I don't want it to conflict with my microphone. Sometimes when logic updates, I don't know how it's going to react when my microphone is on. So, and from here, I'm just going to, we're going to concentrate on this here. This is where the new stuff is with this more tempo. So you have three modes. You have keep, which is just going to keep the tempo that you currently have. You have adapt, which is going to adapt the tempo of the project to whatever audio file you bring. And then auto is just going to determine which one's best from what you bring. There's different um, um, advantages and disadvantages for this. I'm not going to go into detail and telling you those in this video. I just want to show you how to do it quickly. And then later on, I'll do that. Same with the tempo project settings. If I go here real quick. These two um, options down here are very important to determine the right behavior of what you're bringing. For this example only, without explaining to you much what it does, I'm gonna bring it or I'm gonna go to the drop down and set it to on plus align bars and beats. And then I'm gonna say trim start of new regions only because I don't know if what I'm bringing in will have uh, empty regions and I want it to be trimmed what I bring them uh, in. So I'm going to explain to you this on a separate video later. So let's see, I'm just going to go to my to my sources. I'm going to go into my drum breaks. I'm going to bring let's see, let's just bring A little bit loud probably I'm just gonna bring that into my project and before I do that I want the project to adapt the tempo to that specific file that I'm gonna bring in which is a drum break which makes sense um, which will make sense most of the time because you set your beats based on a drum and then you can set your project or bring extra stuff in so notice how I'll zoom in a little bit how the this file says that its tempo should be 86 bits per minute but logic says it's actually 84 and it has detected that there's a change it's just a slight change in tempo from the beginning to a transient here at this point on the second bar and that's really the best tempo that conforms to that audio source so now let's give a listen to that i'm gonna set the cycling for what i have selected Notice that that actually uh, sounds perfect. It's on beat. Just check the twos and the fours here. Every snare is hitting perfectly in the two and the four. So you didn't have to use any flexing or any of that to determine the tempo. Just did it right away for you. So now I'm just going to bring a separate audio file, probably a bass melody. And I want that bass melody to conform to this new project tempo. So the first thing that you're going to do is just change your mode from your smart, smart tempo, you will change it to keep as opposed to adapt. And now it's going to keep that relative tempo. See in your tempo screen how now it's keeping that relative tempo there, that reference tempo. So let's go here to the top spot material, deep house, bass loops. I'm 
bring that. So this says that it should have been at 125 bits per minute, but it's gonna adapt to this. It's actually playing adapted already to that tempo. Uh, let's bring that in and see that nothing, uh, there was no weird effect, it aligned it, but that's just because it's two bars. If it were more, it'd probably go over that, but it's just to be able to listen the two elements together. So all of that sounded perfectly just as if you were using a, a, a Apple loop that does the same thing, right? It stretches or compresses the tempo accordingly. So it's a very powerful tool now that um, we can essentially create whatever we want with different audio files. And as long as you make sure that you have set up your, your project key and your scale correctly, uh, you can um, obviously bring any audio file in and have something conform to a tempo and then keep that tempo and bring separate or additional audio files that are going to then conform to that new tempo from your reference file. So that's very powerful stuff. And with that, I'm going to leave you for this tutorial. What I'm going to shift focus a little bit in the next few tutorials is to show you some of the new things that Logic Pro X 10.4 has brought to the table to see how those help you in your beat making and music making journey. Because things like this, like the Smart Tempo, are not the only things that the program added that are very useful in my opinion that you had uh, different ways of making it in the past that were probably a little bit more cumbersome or required more effort and now it's more much more simpler to do so i want to concentrate on that so that you get those out of the way and start uh, making music with those tools in your hands so if you enjoyed this video please remember to support me by subscribing to my youtube channel clormo and if you want to stay up to date with everything else that i'm doing then pay me a visit to www clormoindustries.com. I'll see you next week. Peace out.